The economy comes and goes, but selling alcoholic beverages is usually profitable, despite all the regulations that governments impose. Today, River Valley, a few years ago, profiled two new small alcoholic beverage manufacturing operations, one a craft beer brewery, a brew pub, and the other a hard cider manufacturer. Since this story appeared, by the way, both of these businesses have done well. But we'll see what they had to say when they were just starting out after a short message from a local business. The new pizza menu at the Jolly Draymond in the Briarly Inn is incomparable with flavors and selections you won't find anywhere else. And the menu keeps changing and growing. Come by once and come by again and again and again. You'll never be disappointed. The Jolly Draymond Pub in the Briarly Inn, Route 2, Bethel, Maine. Maine isn't the easiest place to start new small businesses, but there's one type of business that has been expanding despite the expensive equipment it requires and the complex regulations imposed on it by government. The business is the small-scale manufacture of alcoholic beverages. The growth of beer making in brew pubs and small breweries has been underway for a number of years, but now the beer makers are being joined by cider makers, wine makers, and whiskey distillers. It's all broadly described as the craft brewing and distilling business, and it's drawing customers both by using local ingredients and by creating small batches which can be, in a sense, handcrafted by the brewer or distiller. There is, for example, Rickers Orchards in Turner, Maine, which recently expanded its operations to launch a hard cider business. combination of the buy local movement and the wanting more choice than what was traditionally available for the last 40 years in the mass domestic market. Um, as people want different flavors and more flavors, they're leaning towards local flavors, and that, that's really helping a lot of these guys get off the ground. And it's something like uh, one to two, I think it's like 1.5 breweries per day open across the United States. I'm Andy Ricker with Ricker Hill Orchards and you are in the tasting room here at Ricker Hill. We have been in business since 1803. We just got into hard cider about a year and a half ago. We've been making sweet cider since the 70s. Since we've gotten into hard cider with our initial Maniac Gold, we now have, I think we're up to six or seven different varieties uh, on the market across the state of Maine. We are distributed through Pine State, so any establishment served by Pine State can have us, and that is most of the places who serve alcohol in the state. Cider was a a booming category that with high growth and high growth potential so we felt comfortable that it was time to get in. Um, most of the ciders, especially most of the major ones, are made by brewers who don't know a whole lot about apples. Being apple farmers who make sweet cider, we were comfortable, we knew a lot more about that getting in and that we thought we could make something that tastes better in the market than what the beer guys were putting out at the time. The expansion of alcoholic beverage production has seen brew pubs, where the craft movement began, moving from the larger cities into small towns. One example is the Norway Brewing Company, a brew pub planning to open this spring in Norway, Maine. But I have to say about the state of Maine is that um, they are really excited for small businesses, not just breweries, to open. So they really want to help in any way they can to, to encourage entrepreneurs to do things. So, um, and also they're, they're really excited about being a state that has a lot of breweries and they want to make that happen the best that they can because that's, uh, that's a commodity to them as a state. My name is Charlie Magna Melhus. I am the head brewer and co-founder of Norway Brewing Company. Um, and I'm Erica Melhus. I'm Magna's wife, and uh, I'm the vice president, also co-founder. I will be the taproom manager of Norway Brewing Company. So this is a seven-barrel brew pub. That is to say, our brew house where we brew the beer is uh, sized seven barrels, and we will be serving food and beer on location. We have a small tap room in which we're sitting right now, uh, a rather large beer garden outside with benches and seating. Uh, and then we also will be selling kegs to other bars and restaurants. However, our primary focus is 
on-premise. One of the challenges of starting any business involved with alcohol is meeting extensive government regulation. Those who embark on any craft brewing or distilling business have to take that into account, but it doesn't seem to slow the expansion of the industry. It took us about eight months to get through the licensing and registration process on the initial stuff, and then it's continual on upkeep and getting new labels and new products registered. Well, in the state of Maine, I have found uh, the bureaucracy to be fairly navigable. There's always a certain amount of labeling requirements and uh, registration of the various products you produce when, when there's alcohol involved. However, the federal requirements for licensing are a little bit more stringent. It did take us about four months to get licensed by the federal government to brew beer. So there are a lot of, there are a lot of bureaucratic steps to take to make sure that you will not face fines or get into legal trouble, trouble later, liability issues. However, I think as a business person, you have to expect that going into any kind of regulated industry, um, especially when there's, you know, it's a lucrative business producing alcohol. If there's one thing that helps the growth of the business, it's that people who start with home brewing can go ahead and make a business out of it if they find that they love what they're doing. There are no professional barriers, no licenses or accreditation, other than that the public has to like what you're brewing and buy it from you if you are to succeed. Yeah, I, I'm the one running the whole cider side of the business. We have a uh, guy, Justin, works in the tank room managing the fermentations every day. Well, I started in college uh, playing with hard cider and after messing with it for a few years, I got, so I was making some pretty good stuff. And then it took a few years to get the re convince the rest of the family that we needed to make it commercially. Uh, Justin went to school as a chemical engineer and worked summers in a winery in college. It's, it's not that hard for anybody to make beer, but it does take a little finesse to make exceptional beer. Um, and that I'm really looking forward to the part where we get to start making beer because Magna is a very fantastic brewer. There is craft, handcraft, um, going into these products. It's, for me, a very good blend of science and artis artistic expression. Uh, I have had a little bit of training. I worked for a brewery for three years prior to moving back to Norway, Maine and starting this project. And I interned for somebody else in Freeport, Freeport Brewing Company with Ken Collings way back when, when I worked at the Hair Seeket Inn. Um, but like Erica said, anybody can brew beer. It, it takes skill, patience, determination, often failed batches to brew exceptional beer. If all goes as planned, the Norway Brewing Company will hold its grand opening in May. Meanwhile, the tasting room at Ricker's Hard Cider is open seven days a week at Ricker Hill Farm, found at the intersection of Buckfield and Ricker Hill Roads in Turner, Maine.